Good evening and welcome to the NDTV Dialogues. Tonight, we focus on the Uphar verdict that's now out after 18 long years. But for the families of the 59 killed in that blaze, there is still no closure. In fact, deep, deep disappointment and grief. The Supreme Court verdict had said that the Ansel brothers, the owners of Uphar Cinema, will pay 60 crores, but they will not go to jail. That, the families say, is a symptomatic of a larger problem with the system. We'll hear from them because joining me are Shekhar and Neelam Krishnamurti. They lost both their young children in that place and have fought along with other families for 18 years, 18 years of adjournments, hearings, four judgments. They fought and they say their fight continues. Also with me, Neelam Katara, someone who's gone through some of that same journey when she lost her young son again, killed by two men connected to a powerful political family. She fought the system again alone. She managed some success, but shares some of the pain. Also joining me tonight, The Legal View, I'm joined by retired Justice G.S. Mishra. Now, Justice Mishra was part of the two-judge bench, which upheld the sentence given to the Ansel brothers, their sentence of jail as well. That was last year. This was an appeal pile, uh, filed by the Ansels, which the Supreme Court finally decided on on Wednesday. I'm also joined by Soli Sorabji, former Attorney General of India. Neelam and Shekhar, we've seen the deep grief that you've been through since this verdict came out. You've questioned and challenged the system. Why, why do you say that today? Why do you feel this is a system which is against the victims? One, that yesterday when we were in the court and when the judges were listening to Mr. Ram Jethmalani, he addressed the court from 10.30 till 3.40 in the afternoon on the question of quantum of sentence. But what Mr. Ram Jethmalani argued, he started arguing on the charges. He read a judgment, Kurban Hussain, which I have heard him read about 100 times in the last 18 years. And also he started reading the deposition of the witnesses. This is no stage to read all this. Although I am not a lawyer, but I know that much, that when you are arguing on sentence, you should have referred to the judgment which was delivered by the Honorable Court. And that's when he said these are the findings and then you should go on to the sentencing. But he wasted the court's time in all this and the judges gave him a very, very patient hearing. And later on, he came on to this, the, he even went to an extent of saying that, you know, I, the judges said in that case, you want to challenge, please go for a review petition. And then he says, all right. And suddenly Sushil Ansel comes from the back and he comes and says, no, 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 we don't want to file a review petition. You argue and you tell them. That's when the whole thing thing that we're ready to pay compensation, we can pay 20 crore and he, then Salman Khurshid got up and the whole thing took another turn and somehow he got the judges into saying this that we are willing to compensate the victim, we are ready to put up a trauma centre and we do some good deeds after all, we are doing so much for the society, Though we are running educational institutes. I agree but uh, Neela, let's leave aside the details of what happened in court yesterday because those will be subject to interpretation, their, their lawyers are not here, the answers have refused to come on the show, their lawyers have refused to come on the show. But the larger point you're raising about the system, because I think that's something which you've seen the outpouring of support. You've seen a political party come out uh, up and say that they find the judgment was disappointing. Why do you think this, the system, because in that sense, you did manage to get Harish Salve to represent the CBI, managed to get Harish Salve to represent them. He's again one of the top lawyers in India. That was thanks to the government. The government had appointed him. So and it was his willingness to take up this case pro bono. Had he been charging, I'm sure the government wouldn't have agreed. So why do you feel, mm -hmm. you said that the, this is the worst day for me since the day of the blaze in which you lost your children. Why did you say that? Because you see, that day I lost my children. But then I, as a mother, I felt all right. As a mother, I have duty to get justice for my children. And I wanted to do that before I die. And with that hope, I lived these 18 years. We've actually been suffering. I've undergone a lot of psychological pro problems. And when, in the end of it, when the court lets you down, they set them free. The freedom was at 60 crore rupees. That's all. Probably six flats for Ansels. That's all that it means for them. They have not given a thought as to what have the victims gone through. You know, what trauma have we undergone? Each and every hearing I've attended. Now, the most important thing, what I felt very uh, the pained about was the court has, uh, you know, considered a mitigating factor is of a prolonged trial. They faced 18 years prolonged but trial. Who prolonged the trial is too prolonged. Question. But for me, what I want to say, the judges must go into the fact who was responsible for prolonging the trial. 
we at every stage let me just complete yes. this as victims we approach the high court at the time of framing of charges we approach the high court at the time of trial twice it was only on the directions of the high court on third that the trial had to be concluded by 31st august then when the trial was in the high court we went to the supreme court we got the bail was cancelled by the supreme court the supreme court ordered for a day to day hearing and there the arguments were concluded in 26 hearing Mr. Ram Jethmalani argued only for four days. This, and now when Mr. Jethmalani was there in Supreme Court, he took eight adjournments between 2010 and 2012. And in the Supreme Court, he took over an year to argue. Madam is here, my, uh, Honorable Judge is here, and she would be able to tell you. He argued from 16 November till 21st November. And in the order on 7th of February, the judges have noted Mr. Jethmalani has argued extensively for the last few months. I'm just going to bring in. I'm going to bring in Justice Mishra, who of course uh, gave that judgment. But let me just first get in Shekhar, your husband, who sh who went through the same bereavement. And uh, let me say again how sorry we were about what happened 18 years ago. Sh Mr. Krishnamurthy, your wife, in a sense, became the face of this, and she's taken a lot of the attack. And you've there's been a, almost a campaign, in a sense, against her. You said that just a short while ago she was called insane by an opposing lawyer. How do you answer people who say you will have to move on? Why are you fighting this case? The sentence has been given by the Supreme Court. In a sense, it's a final verdict. Why are you keeping on fighting? It won't change anything. It was actually a promise made to our children. You know, like we were very young when this tragedy happened. I think we, Nila was in late 30s, I was in uh, early 40s. And uh, it was a very conscious decision. Though people told us, you know, we can start a, a family again. And we were at that age, you know, we could have. But a very conscious decision, we took that, no, we are going to fight and we're going to get justice because our, after all, our children were not toys that, you know, the toy is broken and get another one. So we never expected, you know, like we didn't know anything about law, anything. I have not, I, I had not even seen High Court or Supreme Court in 97 because I was traveling and I was, I was uh, engaged in my business. And that's the time it was a conscious decision we took that, look, you know, we're going to fight. And we thought it was going to take two years, open and shut case. You know, I've sent my children to a cinema hall. I, I'm a paying patron. I don't expect that there's going to be a blast in the cinema hall and the people aren't going to get out. They don't have exit. They don't have gangway. I didn't know. I expect the government to do the job. When they give an NOC, they do the job. Yes, there's going to be all the provision of fire safety norms in the, in the cinema hall. I never expected that I send my children at 3 o'clock and get the dead body at 8.30. And that's the decision we took. Look, you know, like we have to, not only, not today, I don't have my children. Today, whatever we are doing, we are doing for the future tragedies. And Supreme Court, I think this is the first case which has reached the Supreme Court. Supreme Court should have taken the advantage of giving a judgment which is going to send a deterrence to the society. Look, if you're going to do this, we are, you're going to go behind bars. And, and we said, no, two years is not enough. This can't be equated to a negligence. This is a willful negligence. They have, they have actually contravened each and every rule of the book. I'm going to bring in Justice Mishra, because Justice Mishra, you actually upheld the Delhi High Court sentence, finding the unsealed guilty, but you differed, and you felt that a one-year sentence was enough uh, for, the, uh, for them, given their advanced stage. Why do you think this issue, because you've seen the disappointment over this verdict, why do you think there's such a gap between what people feel, feel and it's not just the families, you've seen many other people coming out, political parties coming out, why is there such a gap between what people feel and what the, what you decided and what the Honorable Court has decided. Now let me first of all uh, uh, rectify and accurately let you know the facts. Okay. Because there are, I have found even in the newspaper reports, some of the newspaper reports and even you know, the news channel, actually the trial court, the, the uh, threadbare step-by-step -step, uh, 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 sentences that the trial court had awarded two year sentence which was interfered uh, and reduced by the High Court to one year and against which also the accused had filed an appeal in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So uh, two judges, l myself and my co-judge Justice Thakur, we, uh, we upheld the conviction mm -hmm. but <coughs> I took the view that in, uh, in the facts of this case and under where there has been such you know colossal uh, disaster of uh, human lives, why the High Court thought it appropriate uh, to interfere with the trial court judgment and reduce it to one year. So uh, I would put the record again straight All that right. I was the one that I was not happy with that the sentence was reduced to one year. I was of the view that no, it should be, it, the maximum sentence should be awarded of two years. In addition, exemplary punishment should be awarded to them and I imposed a fine of 100 crores 
50 crores to each uh, of the two brothers. Uh, Justice Thakur also upheld the one year sentence awarded by the High Court and we both of us dismissed the appeal that yes, one year sentence has to be there. Now, the difference between myself and my co-judge was only to the extent whether that the additional one year sentence or substitution of sentence with a fine should be, uh, uh, should be given or not. Justice Thakur was of the view that uh, we could not have uh, substituted. So, so what do you feel ma'am then about so this? Let me complete yes. this part. Okay. So the matter was referred to the larger bench and the perception that gained ground was that uh, on question of sentence the judges have deferred which I think it's not really accurate to say that the judges just did not defer on the question on the sentence which was already awarded the judges deferred so only for the enhancement of the punishment so actually that one year extra they spent in court could yes. perhaps have been saved yes but so then what do you think about the verdict that has come this week I uh, my speaking for myself I am a bit confused because I don't have uh, I mean no one has seen the reason judgment and order because I was expecting that because I, I have I have been one of the judge of I mean it's very natural even for the judge who has delivered the judgment to know the reasons why it has been upheld or why it has been overturned. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting that if my judgment is inter, uh, is you know not upheld for enhancement of sentence then the judges at least would give the reasons that why this two year sentence was uh, uh, was uh, interfered with the high court and it was reduced to one year. So that part would be dealt with. But uh, uh, something else has happened that even that one year sentence which I feel has not was not referred to the larger bench has been interfered by the bench. What I mean to say that one year sentence could not have been interfered with because that part was not referred to the larger bench. What was so you are saying at least the one year should have been given one because of the request. But the point that Mr. Krishnamurti made, and I am just going to come to Mr. Surabji as well, the point Mr. Krishnamurti made, this is a case that could have set a precedent. And looking at the larger issue, the belief, we know there are many other cases pending. I refer to the Amri mm, Hospital Krishna, case in Kolkata yeah. where 92 people died yes. and all 16 accused are out in bail. Yes. Where is the precedent? Do you think the Supreme Court perhaps lost a chance to make this a, a landmark uh, verdict? Uh, I guess uh, because you see, uh, uh, frankly speaking, uh, it's a counter view who should be answering this because speaking for myself, I go by what you are saying. I also belong to the same school of thought because I was of the firm view that the sentence should have been uh, enhanced and it is a fit case for the maximum punishment because under 304A, the maximum punishment is two years plus fine, etc., <coughs> etc. So, uh, 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 I feel that yes, you know, it, uh, uh, it could have set a precedent where a standard could have been set for, uh, for the organizers and those who conduct this kind of business to put utmost check on uh, these aspects and uh, be very um, careful about that uh, incidents of such nature do not occur and if it occurs, they will really, I mean, uh, in fact, rather it should be in fact, order the government to frame a law to make sure laws mm -hmm. are Mr. Surabji, mm -hmm. if you can come in here, going beyond this individual case, because of course the detailed judgment is not out yet, but looking at a missed opportunity, the fact that it seems when we talk about cases that shocked collect, uh, collective conscience of a nation, the Supreme Court has used that in a different context when it came to convicting a terrorist to death. This case shocked the collective conscience. What do you think as the former Attorney General, what do you think is actually the next step. The CBI can of course file a review petition but for the families of the victims that means more years in jail. Do you think the system as it is now is completely set against victims and their families? No, no, I won't go to the extent of saying the system is against it. You see after all judges are human beings. They have their own perceptions. They have their own mindsets. I am very disappointed with this. It is almost amounting to compounding a non compounded offence on the question of payment of fine. I don't see how money can be ever be a compensation for the trauma that the uh, victims' families have suffered. But so when people say blood money, what would you say? When people say is blood money, this is a paying a fine. No, 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 that, that's not quite correct. There's nothing like that. You get sometimes carried away by the advocacy of the council. Maybe Ram Jethmanani was too powerful, judges could resist it. What I really find objectionable is not giving time Sorry, Salve. They asked for maybe 15 minutes or so. Yes, That's right. yes. They could have easily given it. I mean, 
technically they said we pass the judgment for the review i think sonia they have been over indulgent to the answers and very niggardly to the victims and that's what i find this is i agree with you sir